Hello everyone and welcome to task number eight. In this task, let's go ahead and perform 3D visualizations using tensorspace.js. Please know that this lecture is intermediate level difficulty. And if you guys remember in the previous task, in task number seven, we have been able to cover the Lynette convolutional neural network. And we learned that Lynette essentially has a feature detection layer, convolution layer first, followed by a downsampling, and then another convolution, followed by another downsampling, and then we have our dense, fully connected artificial neural network, and then finally we have the output containing 10 different outputs for our different numbers, essentially 0 to 9. Okay, so what I wanted to show you guys right now is I wanted to show you the tensorspace.js, so um, I'm going to head to tensorspace.js here, so I have it open here, all right, so if you guys go to tensorspace.org, what you guys see here is we have multiple convolutional neural networks that you're able to visualize, which is super powerful. So as I mentioned, we are going to visualize today our Lynette convolutional neural networks. And then there are a couple of other examples as well, such as ResNet and AlexNet as well. Don't worry about those. We're gonna cover them in the next couple of lectures. So if you click on Lynette, what you guys see here is, well, here I have my Lynette convolutional neural network, which is super cool. So if you guys go back to our slides here, what you guys see is the first layer was a convolution layer, the feature extraction layer, consisting of six feature maps, if you guys recall, I have six feature maps. So if you guys go back here, what you guys see is that's essentially what I see here. I have the first six feature maps, these ones here. And each one of them is, if you guys hover on top of it, is 28 by 28 pixels. And that's what I got here. I have six feature maps. Each of them is 28 by 28. If you guys recall, the next step is we have a downsampling or subsampling layer. Now we are reducing the size of our feature maps. And that's what I'm doing here. So if you click on it, that's gonna expand the layer for us. And here we go. What you guys see is I still have six as well here um, convolutions, if you guys see, or I would say feature maps here. But now we have been able to reduce them, reduce their size. So the original size was 28 by 28. However, if you go here, what you guys see, now I have 14 by 14, the blue ones here, okay? All right. And then what I have next, if you guys recall, I have another convolution, and then I will end up with 16 different feature maps, and each one of them is 10 by 10. So if you go back, and if you try to expand the next layer here, here we go, here we go, I have 16, so I have 1, 2, 3, 4 by 1, 2, 3, 4. So 4 by 4, that means 16, and that's the second, essentially, convolution. Afterwards, I have another downsampling, and if you guys see here, I still have the same essentially size, so I still have 16 different um, uh, convolutions here, right, or I would say feature maps, but their size is much smaller. What you guys see is essentially I took these features here, and then I was able to reduce their size in the next layer, and that's what I've got here. I took these 16, reduced their size, and that's what I ended up here. Still 16, but now they are 5 by 5 instead of 10 by 10 pixels. And then afterwards, if you guys see here, if I try to expand that, now I took all these different pixels, if you guys remember, ex essentially um, flattened them up. And that's what I ended up here. So I flattened them up. And then I was able to connect them to a dense, fully connected artificial neural network. And that's what I've got here. So you took all that, you connect them to in another layer here. This is the 84 neurons. And then I have the output. And what you guys see is if you write, let's say, number five, you will see that the output here, number five, has been able to fire or essentially um, um, has the highest probability, per se. And you can actually go ahead and test the network right now with different numbers. For example, I can write, let's say, number three. And what you guys see here, that's essentially what's going on behind the scenes. You extract different features initially with the convolution layer first. You reduce their size, you perform downsampling. You do another convolutions afterwards, another downsampling. You flatten it up. You add another dense, fully connected artificial neural network. And then you end up at the end with the output. And of course, you can go ahead and clear it up. Maybe you can write number six, for example, here. You can say, let's say number six. And what you guys see is number six here has been able to fire, and that's essentially what the network can see behind the scenes. 
super interesting, super um, cool. And if you guys go back, you will be able to see, I've included a couple of slides here for you guys. So uh, in task eight, as I mentioned, we're gonna go ahead and visualize our Lynette convolutional neural network using tensorspace.js. Here we go, here we have the our uh, CNN Lynette that I just showed you guys. And that simply concludes task number eight. I hope you guys enjoyed it. In task number nine, let me show you guys another convolutional neural network, which is one of the state-of-the-art convolutional neural networks available right now, which is known as ResNets or residual neural networks. And then we're going to learn how to visualize them. And then we're going to have our final project. And that's it. That's simply all I have for today's task. I hope you guys enjoyed it and see you in the next task.